Are you a dairy producer? Or do you grow grapes, nuts, fruits, or vegetables? We have it all with American Vineyard, Pacific Nut Producer, California Fresh Fruit, California Dairy, and Vegetable West magazines. Subscribe for free now at malcomedia.com to stay current on the freshest news in your industry. Hello, I'm Matthew Malcolm with American Vineyard Magazine and today at the annual Tree and Vine Expo in Turlock, nearly a thousand growers and PCAs gathered to enjoy an industry trade show, stay up to date with what's going on in the industry and learn best practices for vineyard management. Uh, one of the seminars featured today was given by Paul Vertigal who gave some advice on what growers should be focusing on post-harvest. It's not critical that you be irrigating every winter all the time and constantly and, and soaking the ground, <clears throat> but if it's not raining at all, it's really good probably to irrigate in the winter time, and so keep that in the back of your mind. But also another thing to keep in mind is if there's gonna be a rain, a predicted rain event, the best time to put that water on is right before the rain event because then you can get some leaching with the rain of any salts that might be in the, the well water that you're using, or water source, <clears throat> and you can also then make more effective the rainfall that does occur. Well, yeah, post-harvest uh, considerations now that 2016 harvest is a uh, fond memory, hopefully. It's a good time to start thinking ahead a little bit, uh, after a short break anyway, that uh, irrigation systems, of course, should be checked out just to make sure things are functioning for when you are ready to use them. And if uh, we do see a return to dry conditions, the question I usually get is, uh, should I be irrigating in the winter time? And it can be a good thing to think about. If it's not raining, you probably should be irrigating. So uh, besides checking your system out, getting trellis repair and all that done, getting prepared for weed control, uh, it's a good time to assess what your problems were last year and uh, identify weed problems, uh, problem areas, and uh, then think about weed control as a year-round uh, strategy because uh, it's important to get ahead of the problem and uh, not just win the battle but hopefully win the war by preventing the, seed, the weeds from seeding and uh, that can be a real significant uh, problem with resistance management if uh, you do control weeds but uh, after the fact that they've seeded uh, then we begin to see problems I think develop more quickly. Uh, so thinking of identifying weed problems and uh, making plans in for using combination of materials, uh, rotating different uh, modes of action groups, and then um, thinking about sequential applications, uh, not just one-time strip spray in the late winter, early spring, and walking away, but thinking about, besides that, doing some more in-season control and mixing up uh, using an integrated program that not just chemicals, but whether it's physical, cultural controls, uh, and even if the budget can allow to do a walkthrough and do some physical weed control of perennial weeds or real problem weeds before they get too big and are too difficult to control. The nutrient management is probably something to think about then too as uh, the new year approaches that uh, we don't see quite the benefit that we used to think in post-harvest application, at least for late season varieties. Uh, if you have a very early season variety, uh, Chardonnay, Pinot Grigio, there's still a lot of benefit to a post-harvest uh, fertilization program, whether it's nitrogen or potassium or any other nutrients that you might be thinking of. But uh, we do want to probably avoid nitrogen applications until the following spring when the vines are actively picking uh, materials up and at that point then uh, be thinking about uh, the four R's which is the right time, the right uh, material, and the right amount and placed in the, in the right location so that uh, we can more eff effectively and efficiently manage uh, nitrogen, potassium, and all the other nutrients uh, whether they're applied in the soil or the foliar, uh, not only for the compliance issues, but just for uh, getting more effective use and uh, better bang for your buck. Thank you, Paul. Learn more about improving your vineyard management practices by reading American Vineyard Magazine, where the proceedings of today's show will also be featured in the coming issues. I'm Matthew Malcolm, CaliforniaAgnet.com.